Our Scorched Earth by Graydon Blight 782 days and still no life. Empty skies and silent oceans. 782 days ago, when the birds fell to the earth, life in the sea boiled alive, and man fell to its knees. Trudging through the desert, my body rusted and my gears choked with sand. I climb up the dunes, still in search of any sign of life. A small pocket on this world where the sun hadn't burnt it to its core elements. Reaching the top of the dune, I'm met with the view of nothing but sand. The horizon shifting shape and waving over the orange sky. As I make my descent down the dune, I'm pulled back sharply by the umbilical cord. Looking back, I can see my life support pod has once again fallen to the ground. The intake filled with sand as I try desperately to clean it out. A black, viscous goop dug out from the intake as a blast of cold air coughs up the sand it was choking on. Now once again afloat, I stand over the pod, wiping the sand from the glass and looking at the woman sound asleep inside. I stand with a clenched fist, envious of myself enjoying such a peaceful nap throughout this hell. The sunlight breaking over the horizon as the morning shifts into day. I can now only make out my own reflection. The unfamiliar an unflattering dead expression of two small white lights for eyes on the square head. The red paint peeling from the metal frame, revealing rusted and scratched metal. Somewhere underneath all of this mess was my mind, detached from the body that I drag along behind me. Over two years, I've spent within this life and body support droid. And after all that time, I haven't found even the potential of life. Once again, standing outside the building where everything started. A round trip, completely around the world, and I have nothing to show for it. The lab's droid wouldn't make it another trip around the world. It may run forever from solar power, but the harsh conditions will turn its body to dust long before then. Coiling the umbilical cord around my arm and resting my foot against the pod, I contemplated pulling the cord hard, forcing my mind back into my body. I'd probably pass away from shock before I even had a chance to open my eyes or maybe find it too hot to breathe, and I would just suffocate. But at least I'd feel, and at least I wouldn't have the burden of humanity's fate weighing me down. A weight forced on me by a desperate man, opening the pot of a patient awaiting surgery, seeds, eggs, and sperm samples thrown in with me as his face turned red and began to blister, slamming the pod shut while I tried to make sense of it all. The next moment, finding myself in a lab droid, surrounded by nothing but blistered red corpses attached by a string to my near lifeless body. As I let my arm fall limp, the cord slipping from my grasp to fall to the ground. I decide to continue on. Not yet strong enough to overcome the guilt that would come with giving up. Through the city, I admire how little things have changed. Sure, most of it has started to crumble or melt, but with a little imagination, I can picture everything as before. People running around me to get to work. 
their suits all neat in a briefcase in a tight grasp. Others, sitting outside of restaurants enjoying drinks with their friends, savoring the hot weather before winter rolls in. The cars around me, stuck in traffic. The melted tarmac of the road almost like quicksand as it tries its best to pull me under, pulling me back to the scorched reality. A body slumped against the wall by a cafe catches my eye. Approaching the body, I kneel down in front of them, lifting their head as it was almost falling off. The sun-bleached skull with hollow eyes looks back at me. I'm Mila. You doing okay? I ask, almost fearful of a response. Few too many drinks, perhaps? As I joke around, the jaw droops slightly. Falling back, I wait for the skull to talk back, but nothing. Deep down, I was hoping for them to respond. Please. I beg, but nothing. I'd never truly admired the scale of the Golden Gate Bridge, but now, as I walk beneath it, I'm awestruck by its sheer grandness. The water around me all dried up as I walk from one side to the other, weary to walk across the bridge itself. As with each gust of wind, the bridge would groan and snap. A few of the cables already hanging loose. The ground was littered in flakes of dried paint, carpeting the seafloor in red. There's a blast of wind, strong enough to push my life support pod away from me as I grab onto the cord to reel it back in. I notice it's snowing. Snowing the same red flakes of paint that were already around me. A magical sight as I continued onward. An oddly satisfying crunch with each step. The Dead Sea was the saddest sight I'd encountered. Walking through the archways of whalebone, crushing dead white coral beneath my feet. The endless, uneven terrain of a dead ocean. Obsessed by the small puddles of water that were left, wondering if anything still lived inside, even bacteria, that may start life again if I am to fail. I'm not even sure what to do if I do find life, or somewhere to at least support the theory of it. How long will I have out of my pod to enjoy the breathable air before my cancer catches up with me? Enough time to see the seeds I plant bloom? The eggs I incubate to hatch? The child I impregnate myself with to take their first steps? I was no Eve. I've never wanted children. And Earth died because of us, so it's only fair that we die along with it. Over time... The dried fields of what seemed like endless salt came to an end. The days and nights passing by so fast it felt like it all had blurred into one purple moment. I could no longer recall how many days had passed. Keeping count no longer felt important. Maybe it had only been a few months since I stopped. Maybe a hundred years. Yet still, this body of metal seemed tenacious enough to keep plowing forward. My body suspended in time following along behind me. I used to look back and check that it was still there every step. Now I go days without checking if I'm still attached. I may have spent longer in this body than I ever did my own. What came after the dead ocean was another desert. I'd grown weary of the same orange and brown color palette of this dead world. But still, I kept on going forward, clambering over dunes in search of anything. Trying to carefully make my way down the dune, my leg seizes up and I begin to tumble. The umbilical cord wrapping around me as everything sinks into a deep black. A painful warm sting in my lungs as I wake up gasping for air, 
my skin like it's on fire as I try to make sense of my surroundings. Looking to my left and down the dune, I see the lab's droid in a crumbled and tangled mess. As I hold my breath, I grab onto the life support pod and push it over the edge as I slide down after it. My skin already turning red and starting to blister as I desperately try to take another breath, my lungs probably scarred from my initial gasp of air. Reaching the lab's droid, I began to dig underneath to find the end of the cord. The sand, like hot ash. I only want to scream out in agony as I find the end and plug it back into the pod. Everything begins to fade as I become dizzy and pull my weary body back inside, shutting the door to shield myself from the scorching sun. The damage having already been done. Taking a moment to collect my thoughts, the pod once again began cooling and filling with liquid. Hoping it would soothe my blistered skin, it only aggravates the wounds as I scream out in pain. A dull echo bouncing around the pod as the liquid falls into my mouth and fills my lungs. Back in the lab droid again, I carefully untangle myself. Testing that the leg still works, I walk up to the pod. My face in frozen horror, the skin red raw and my eyes bloodshot and yellow, almost unrecognizable. What good could this body do anymore? My feet dragging through the sand, the absence of the sun in the sky helped me feel calm, wishing my fall could have happened now rather than when it was at its highest. Walking through the night, I noticed my arms swing was stiff and rigid, my legs putting in less and less effort, my feet dragging more and more until finally they didn't have the strength to carve through the cooling sand. Checking my battery levels, shocked by the percentage. I'd never once seen it dip below 95%. Yet now it read as single digits and was falling closer to zero by the second. As I began to panic, my knees buckled and my body fell and slumped over on its side. Running a diagnostic, it seemed the solar panels had been damaged, and it must have happened during the fall. The whole day, my battery was being drained, and now it had entered power saving mode. Nothing but my hands and head could move, and soon the power would fall to zero and this body would shut off, leaving me trapped within the life support pod. The sun beating down on the glass as it cooked me alive. As I try to figure out what I can do, the sand by my hand begins to shift, rise and then fall. Confident I've finally gone crazy, a large black scorpion erupts from the sand and begins to crawl towards me. Lifting itself onto my hand, I watch as the insect inspects my fingers with its claws, before I finally bring my hand to a fist, crushing it. I'd never had to consider it before, but lab droids can run off of organic matter. Holding my hand above my head and letting what was left of the bug slip between my fingers and into my mouth. Only 3% added, but enough that my arms can now move. Crawling forward, I find a lizard, scurrying to safety beneath the sand. My hand reaching in after it and dragging it up by the tail. 10%. Taking large bites from the side of a cactus, I'm able to stand again, finally realizing that I've found it. Life. Throughout the rest of the night, I followed the path before me, the palette changing from a dead orange to a lively green, a small pocket of the world untouched by the impact of the sun. 
what lived here only brave enough to venture out during the nights, but it was all leading somewhere. And then I saw it. Ahead of me was a large lake. Grass had begun to sprout around the edges as I watched the water ripple and reflect the morning sun. The closer I got, the more I could see, into what I could only describe as a tunnel leading down into the lake. As I examined the door to the tunnel, a large and wide beam of red light emitted from the top and washed over me. Not long after, a gust of steam rose from the bottom of the door as it slowly opened. And then a man, in a bulky white suit, large boots, and a silver visor, waved me in. As the door closed behind me, I looked around as fish swam around the tunnel. Everything dyed blue as the man spoke in a language I couldn't understand, though he seemed ecstatic for my arrival. Reaching the end of the tunnel, my legs again began to seize up. The organic material burnt and used up as my battery had once again been depleted to single digits. Men and women rushing to the aid of my pod as everything began to fade again. Then, there was a rush of cool air in my lungs. <laughs>